Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome back to my blog. Um, this is week four, I believe, and I'm pretty excited that we finally get to delve into diet and exercise, which I'm sure people who have watched are ready for that. We're going to delve into how to get started with both your diet and your workout routine, and basically how to go from there, because hopefully if you've watched the previous blogs, you've kind of learned how to plan before you even are ready to get started. So I think we're ready to finally talk about getting started. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so in the intro, I lied a little bit. We're not quite ready to jump in getting started, although we, that is what we are talking about today. There are a couple more precursors before you're ready to start your workout routines and your diets, and that is before pictures. Now look, I get it, before pictures suck. If you're anything like me when I started mine, I didn't want to take a picture and look at it, and I definitely didn't want to take a picture with my shirt off. So my easiest way around this was to take the picture and then send it to my email and then store it in a folder somewhere where I didn't have to see it every day or even you know every week or anything like that. But before pictures are so important because as you go on your weight loss journey, there's nothing more fun than to go look back at where you were and where you are today. Those photos are embarrassing as can be, but when you make that progress, that embarrassing photo doesn't matter anymore because that's not you. That's the old you. So although the photos are really embarrassing and hard to look at when you get started, as you go down the road, you're going to want that photo because it's going to show that progress. It's going to be the most important photo you take. Okay, so after you've taken these before photos, which again are extremely important because they're going to be a huge motivating factor down the road, you want to take measurements. Measurements are important. Measurements are important because, as you know, and I'm sure you've heard, the scale doesn't always go down. You can be losing weight and gaining muscle, and the scale won't show it. But measurements do. Measurements are extremely important to do before and as you progress and move along. It also allows you to reassess your goals as you watch your weight and your weight measurements go down. Measurements are important, too, because you want them to be accurate. You can find many sites online that tell you how to measure, where to measure, and things like that. So one of the important things is before you get started, take that before photo and take those measurements. Store them somewhere. If you don't want to look at them like me because you're embarrassed, that's fine. Put them somewhere you don't have to see them, but you're going to want to pull them back out when you start progressing. So don't forget to take those measurements as well. And finally, the last precursor before we can really get started with a workout and a diet routine. This precursor is the most important because it's going to allow you to be, maintain your exercise routine, maintain your diet. This one is tops all other ones, and it is fitness testing. What is fitness testing? Fitness testing is doing increments of a workout to determine where you're at now, so as you move forward, you can progress. You can also know where to start so you're not overdoing that first workout. One of the biggest detriments to your workout, to staying motivated and staying you know, consistent is overdoing a workout early on in the weight loss, in the dieting, and the exercising. If you overdo it, you can hurt yourself. Not only hurt yourself, you can ultimately just make yourself so sore that you just don't want to do it the next day or the next day, and you take too many days off, and then you don't get into a routine. So you want to do a fitness just test where basically for weightlifting, you just do somewhere between three and five reps of something one time, determine if that's comfortable for you or if you need to add weight or subtract weight, and you find that range that you feel good doing between three to five reps. That kind of starts to give you an idea of where you want to go from there. The same thing is true for dieting. You kind of start taking away different food groups, things like that, just for a day and see where you're at. Also, you start writing down the things you're eating. It doesn't necessarily equate to a test per se, but we call it that because then it allows you to know where in your diet things are really bad and where in your diet things may not so be so bad. Fitness testing is important. Same thing with running and cardio. You don't go out and run five miles right off the bat if you aren't able to do five miles. So fitness testing is important. One of my favorite running apps is the Nike Run Club app. It's something I've used to help lose my weight, and I recommend it to everybody. The reason being is they set up plans based on your fitness level. They give you tests before you. they even develop a plan for you where you go out and do these tests using your phone, and it clocks exactly your speed, 
how long you can run, endurance, things like that, and then they build a plan based off that. And that plan will progress to get harder and harder as the weeks go on. But if you follow that plan, it works. So I really recommend that app if you're running for cardio and things like that. And again, don't forget the fitness testing before you get started because you don't want to give yourself a you don't want to start off with a detriment by overdoing the first day's workout and then not being prepared to do the second and third day because you're too sore or you've pulled something or you've hurt something, etc. So please do the fitness test first. All right, so we're finally going to get into the workout and diet routines. But here's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with some basic principles. Because a lot of people will jump right in and they won't follow the basics and they'll end up not continuing this program because they'll just want to give up after day one or even week one. So let me start with this. A lifestyle change such as this where you want to lose weight, increase your fitness, and change your overall appearance. This is a marathon, not a sprint. I say that because so many people see 60 day challenges, 90 day challenges, see that you can lose with this pill in 30 days and that is not a healthy method and it's also not an accurate method. If you truly want to change the way you look, the way you feel and everything else in your life, you have to do it over time. And the most important part of this is people want to immediately jump into a workout and they want to run 5 miles. Because they think if they run five miles in the first day that the weight will come off faster and things will progress faster. That's not the case. In fact, most of the time when you rush, you're going to end up causing problems that not only affect your health but also affect your goal. And it will actually cause time to increase on achieving those goals. For example, if you come out and you think automatically you're going to lift some high amount of weight and you injure yourself, that sits you out for at least two weeks depending on the injury and so on. And then you aren't able to work out at all. So jumping into this at a runner's pace is only going to hurt you. What you want to do is start slow and you listen to your body. That's one of the most important tips I can give you. Listening to your body. Now there's a difference between pain that's soreness and pain that's pain. And you'll learn as you go through this what that is. Sometimes things hurt and you want to work through those. But other times things hurt and you need to know to stop and listen to your body. That's something you kind of learn with time and you can ask your doctor about and things like that. But what you want to do is start slow, ease into these programs, and you'll watch the progress happen as you move along. Obviously starting slow when it comes to working out and running is really important. But what a lot of people don't know is that starting slow with your diet is also as as important. For example, if you sit here and decide you want to take out sweets, soda, bread, and so on, and you try to do it all at once, you're going to overwhelm your body. Overwhelming your body is going to cause you to crave these things more, and it's also going to lead to you being weaker and even more tired most of the time. You can't just take everything out of your diet because your body's gotten used to working based off of that diet. So the best way to do a diet like this is to start off slow. Remove one bad thing that you want to remove and work until that thing is no longer a craving. Then move on to the second thing in your list that you want to remove and so on and so forth. There's two terms that I use a lot. One is, over, one is shocking the body and one is overwhelming the body. Shocking the body is a good thing. When you work out, you want to shock the body. You'll hear me say that a lot. It's basically bringing in new things that show those muscles that you're not just doing the same routine over and over again. But overwhelming the body is a bad thing. Like in diet where you take away everything all at once, your body gets overwhelmed. It can't take the lack of whatever the nutrition value that you're getting out of those bad foods and all of a sudden not eating those things. You'll end up just causing more cravings, which is really, really hard to overcome. So by removing one thing at a time, it makes the cravings less severe and it'll allow you to slowly progress and until, until at that point where you will get to the diet you want to be on. Alright, so now we're going to start talking a little bit about where you can begin this process. I want to start with working out. Working out, as we talked about, is something you want to ease into, especially if you don't work out on a regular basis now and you're completely starting a new routine for yourself. Something I tell a lot of people is that what you should really be doing is light weights, 
for 12 to 15 reps. Yes, there are people that will tell you that eight reps build muscle and there is truth to that. But if you're trying to lose weight, 12 to 15 reps is usually the ideal amount of reps for weight loss. It keeps your heart rate up and it allows you to basically burn the fat while building muscle. It's through these lighter weights that you can also kind of get an assessment of how much weight you're able to do without straining yourself. That's important as well. So it's not a bad thing to do light weights. You'll often see me in the gym next to people and doing significantly less weight than them. But that's not because I can't lift more weight. It's because I've got a routine that I want to follow to help myself become more defined, lose weight, and also because I don't want to strain or injure myself. I see people all the time doing way too much weight and they end up hurting themselves. And again, that injury can leave you out for two, three, four weeks or more, and then you aren't able to progress as you hope. So then it makes your goals further out and take a longer time to achieve. So what you want to start with is light weights, 12 to 15 reps, and do so in such a manner that you're learning about your body and what you can handle. Then as you progress, you can then see later on what weights work best for you and move to the 8 to 10 reps kind of thing. But really it's important to start slow and just kind of learn what your body can take and what it can't so you don't have that injury or that strain that causes you to miss time. As I've kind of mentioned, a big important thing when weightlifting or even running is technique. If you don't have a good form, it's not only going to lead to injury, but it's also not going to work you the way it should. Therefore, again, your goals could take longer to achieve. Technique can be learned watching videos on YouTube and things like that. At some point, I will show you some exercises as well, but that may not be for a little while. If you're wanting to get started, I would really recommend watching people who have been successful and see the technique they follow. I see people all the time at the gym jerking weights and things like that. That jerking motion will cause injury. If you can't do the amount of weight that you first selected, don't be afraid to set it down and move to a lighter weight. I know at the gym people get embarrassed and things can, you know, people judge other people and things like that, but you've got to let that go. You're not there to be judged or judge other people. You're there to make yourself better. If anyone wants to judge you, well, they just can judge you because you are making yourself better. It is confidence that's important when you go there, and if you've got to go down weight, well, then you got to go down weight. This mainly applies to guys I know. Guys are very cocky, and they always want to be the bigger, better alpha male, so to speak. But you can go down on weight, and it'll help you figure out what your body can handle, avoid injury, and really lead to big progressions. Something I don't hear talked about a lot when it comes to working out and really kind of figuring out what's best for you is the proper equipment is needed. A lot of us have gym memberships, but a lot of us don't as well. So for the people who don't, obviously equipment comes more into play. But equipment's also important for other things that people leave out. Number one, the most important piece of equipment you can have is your shoe. Finding a tennis shoe that works for you, especially if you're a runner, is extremely important. It will lead to less strains on your back and your legs, and it'll also allow you to work out harder and more often if you have the right shoe. I can't emphasize enough how important tennis shoes are. And although if you become a runner and decide running is the thing you enjoy, you replace tennis shoes often. It's a pain in the butt, it costs money, but there's nothing more important than running with a shoe with enough support that you can avoid a back injury or leg soreness or whatever the case may be. Another piece of equipment that I personally find extremely important is good headphones. This is because for me, music is the most important factor in my workout. I always wanna have good music because I enjoy listening to good music while I work out. You'll often see me dancing in the gym and things like that, and that's because I enjoy listening to music. It allows me to enjoy my workouts more. So for me, finding a good set of Bluetooth headphones is important. I like Bluetooth headphones because you don't have a cord connected to your phone. You can set your phone down while you work out and things like that, but you still have the music playing in your ears. It's also important for running because it helps avoid you know, pulling the headphones out of your ears or whatever the case may be. I have to run with my phone, but at least I can hold it in my hand and don't have to worry about things falling out of my ears. Another big thing is if you're working out at home, which is 99% of what I do. I do my workouts at home, not in the gym. I get to go to the gym occasionally and I enjoy that, but I do 90% of my workouts at home. 
that's going to be weights and resistance bands. I often promote resistance bands, especially to people who are new to working out because they're cheap and they also can really, really work you out better sometimes than weights can. I use resistance bands all the time because they, they, all they do is attach to a door and then you have every workout piece of equipment you can think of by using those resistance bands. But if you decide you'd rather do weights or dumbbells or things like that, if you're new to working out, honestly, you shouldn't be needing over 40 pound dumbbells. So I would recommend, you know, if they're interchangeable dumbbells, you want to look, you know, between zero and 40 pounds. If they're dumbbells that come pre, you know, like 25 pound dumbbells that you can't take apart, I really recommend doing, if you're new, a 10 pound, a 15 pound, and a 25 pounder, somewhere in that increment, because that's really what's going to give you the best workout, allow you to do 10, 10 12, or 15 reps, and also help you lose weight the fastest. The last piece of equipment that I really recommend is find yourself clothing that is comfortable, but that you enjoy being in. You know, a lot of people say, well, you're at the gym, you're not there to look pretty, and there's, that's true. But when you start working out, you want some clothing that makes you feel good because you'll start seeing results and you want to be able to go to the gym and there's mirrors everywhere in the gym and you want to say, man, I look good. So you really want to be able to look good at the gym as well. I'm not telling you put on makeup and do things like that, but I'm saying find clothing that you feel good in because as you begin to lose weight, you're going to be looking at yourself and really enjoying that gym experience if you're a gym person. So equipment is so important. But if you find the right equipment, you start off slow, you learn what your body's telling you, you're going to progress and you're going to be successful. Alright, so diet's fairly easy and hard all at the same time. We all know what we eat that we shouldn't. We hear it on TV every day. If you're like me, I was a mashed potato lover. I loved mashed potatoes and I would put 10 gallons of cheese on my mashed potatoes. The same thing's true with like chocolate. I was a big chocolate person. So I knew from hearing on TV, I knew what things needed to be removed from my diet. The difference is, is learning to slowly remove them as I mentioned. But as you remove them, you can't just take them away sometimes. Sometimes your body needs certain things like chocolate, for example. Maybe not chocolate exactly, but it wants some kind of sweetness that you can't overcome that craving. The importance here is not only to take those things out of your diet one at a time, but sometimes to find a replacement because your body craves certain things and you may supplement them with bad things now, but there are healthy things out there that can cure that craving and make you not want the chocolate or the mashed potatoes with cheese or whatever the case may be. For example, the easiest one I can think of that I did was coffee sugar, sugar for my coffee. I drink sugar with my coffee because I'm not a black coffee person. But what I learned is blue agave nectar is a perfect replacement for sugar, but 10 times healthier. And you take the blue agave nectar and you put it in just like you would sugar into your coffee. It was something that simple that I was able to replace. I could drink coffee still every morning and I didn't crave sugar instead of that blue agave nectar. That is important. If you can find replacements, it'll make dieting so much easier because then you won't be craving those things that you're taking out. Soda was very hard to take out of my diet. I'm a huge, you know, 2 p.m. I need a soda to pick me up, so I drink a Diet Coke. The way I overcame that was tea, such as green tea, is extremely healthy, but it has the caffeine that my body craved. So I drink some green tea and that would cure that caffeine craving, which I learned it's not the so much the soda's taste that I wanted, it was the caffeine high I wanted. But that green tea has a natural caffeine that's better for you and green tea as a whole is extremely nutritional. So it's things like that that if you can find replacements, your body will make it so much easier on itself and it won't crave those bad things that you've taken out of your diet. So diet, the big thing is one at a time. Don't over, you know, don't shock, excuse me, don't overwhelm the body, but just take the things away one at a time. And then if you can find replacement for those things, the internet's a great source as we all know. So looking at those things online, you can find those replacements that are healthy and, you know, really help the body out when it comes to dieting. And one big thing about dieting is it is 10 times more important than working out. And there's a couple reasons for that. Being a guy who never wanted to diet, could find himself at the gym running to lose weight, would lose 15 or 20 pounds, but that's it. 
has learned how important dieting is, especially with this last weight loss I've been through. Dieting is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you work out, you have to fuel your body with things that will help you not only boost your metabolism, but gain the muscle or whatever the case may be. You can't do that with unhealthy foods. You have to have the healthy foods and put it into your body. Your body needs certain things like protein to help you get you know, where you want to be in weight loss and things like that. The other big important factor that I don't think I've ever heard someone actually say about dieting is dieting is the most important because you have to eat every day. And what I mean by that is this. Sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes we don't want to work out and sometimes we just can't work out. Sometimes, whatever the case may be, you just don't have time to get to the gym that day. But what you have to do is eat. And you know what? If you eat healthy and you build a routine of eating healthy, it's going to continue to allow you to progress even when you don't have time to get to the gym that day. It's going to allow you to still lose weight when maybe you just don't have the time to go work out. That is the most important thing is that a diet will not go away if you make a routine of it because of work or whatever because you always have to eat. But when it comes to working out, sometimes we miss a day. We all do. But dieting will still be there. So that's why it's the most important factor to weight loss. So I know today we just touched on kind of the very basics on how to get started and some tips and tricks on getting started with your diet and your workout routine. But moving forward, we're going to actually talk more about the actual workout routine, actual diets, for example, what to bring into your diet and things like that. It's just I wanted to start with the basis, basics because they're the most important for you. They, it's learning those things are going to make the routine so much easier and so much better for yourself. And if you do that, you're going to be successful. We all want to just jump into workout routines because they're uncomfortable and you want to lose weight really fast. But that's not how it works. It's getting a sustainable program that your body becomes used to and you build up a habit. That is what's going to lead to the weight loss and lead to the muscles and lead to whatever else you're trying to achieve. If you jump into things running full speed, you're going to not only lead to injury, but you're going to lead to just not being motivated and pain and things are just going to be uncomfortable. So again, as we move forward in this and I start telling you things to do for workouts and diets and stuff like that, just remember, start slow, listen to your body, and just do the things as they come. Don't try to rush them. So just remember, start slow, listen to your body, and progress as your body allows you to. Don't jump in trying to run full speed. I appreciate y'all coming back and listening to another week's vlog, and I promise moving forward we will get into more specifics of workouts and diets, but I really found it important to touch on these basics so you get a good understanding of what it takes to make a habit for yourself. As always, feel free to email me at intellectualphysique at gmail.com Always, you can go to my Instagram, which is Intellectual Physique, and, you know, please subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing. Thanks again for watching.